Well, we're really glad that you're all here today. Thank you for taking time to come out. Uh, I hope you like our new embassy. It's uh, this is uh, we got to find another name for it. We call this the multi-purpose room, that, uh, <laughs> uh, and that that means it's places where we can have meetings like this. But uh, as you'll see on the walls, uh, I don't know if they've explained it to you. We're also going to use this room uh, as a, a place where we can have young artists uh, come and exhibit their work and. Uh, and then try to drive prices up high so that the, all of the wealthy American embassy employees will buy the, uh, buy the art. Our first exhibition is actually uh, from several uh, Crimean Tatar artists. We're here today because uh, more than 60% of the world's population is under the age of 30. Did you know that? 60%. Um, and the, that demographic, uh, empowered by new technologies, is really one of the foremost uh, drivers of economic and social progress in the world. And we hope that it will be a driver here in Ukraine as well. Um, we were just having a short meeting with our, our guest, uh, uh, Ronan Farrow, and explaining some of the programs and things we have here uh, to try to encourage young people and to if possible, get money to support different things, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. But uh, what we're doing today is basically something our Secretary of State has wanted to do, convene a, a youth task force, which will be uh, a way to help certainly us uh, understand things that are out there, issues that affect you and your, uh, your colleagues and friends, but uh, hopefully also to, uh, to help you uh, move ahead uh, in your own society, because uh, you know, you, I'm sure you hear it said many times, you are the future, and uh, there's a lot of problems in Ukraine that you guys are well aware of that need to be changed, and uh, uh, you're going to be the ones who uh, will have to do it. We can help, but you have to do it. Mm -hmm. um, we're really lucky today because uh, Ronan Farrow is here. He is the special advisor to the Secretary of State. For global youth issues and he is the director of the State Department's Global Youth Issues Office. Um, he is here not only for this first meeting and he will tell you that I think we are the the, the, the second in the sure. in, in Europe to do this uh, and that's just because yesterday he was in Latvia and before he got here otherwise we would have been first so <laughs> we, we, goofed, we goofed up there. But you know what we're You're trying one of the first. One of the first. Uh, we're trying to find a way in the Youth Council to engage in dialogue, to empower you as agents of change, um, and to try to enhance opportunity and participation to the extent that we can try to do this. Uh, it's as simple as that, uh, but it's also something that's going to take some work. And it's uh, something that uh, we hope that we can count on you to help us uh, and to be the very, to be the leading edge of the agents of change in this kind of society. Uh, I could go on, but I think it's better if I turn it over to the man who really knows these issues. Uh, let me introduce, say with great pleasure, it's, it, uh, it is to have Ronan Farrow here with us in, in Kiev today. So, Ronan, please. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Taft. You guys have an incredible team of allies in this embassy staff here. Um, so I want to thank the ambassador and his whole front office and public affairs section and Doug, who's going to be so involved in, in running this, uh, this youth council. Um, as you just heard, they really are on the cutting edge of this. Uh, we have now 40 councils of local young people all around the world um, that serve as one of the first times that we've really directly reached out to youth and asked them, what are we doing right, but also, what are we doing wrong? What could we do better? Um, how can we partner with you and give you tools so that, as the ambassador put so eloquently, you can be the solution, be the change, because the answers are not going to come from without. Um, but I think the United States can play a very real role in linking you up to the resources so that you can make your goals and aspirations a reality. Um, we've decided that that is a priority everywhere that the United States flag flies. And as you just heard, Secretary Clinton, my boss, just announced uh, a new policy that really refocuses us on youth. Um, and that process of building a, a new seat at the table for young people at all of our embassies and consulates, um, telling the world that this is a demographic that we care about partnering with, um, is a result of a number of factors on the ground. It's the numbers that you just heard about, mm -hmm. where there are so many young people in the world. It's uh, the collision of 
technologies that allow young people to be empowered and be a backbone of economic growth as young entrepreneurs and small business owners. Um, that allows them to be champions of good governance and democracy. Um, you know, as we've seen in so many countries, uh, you know, especially in this part of the world historically, where young people were at the heart of overthrowing repressive regimes. Um, and of course, over the last year, we've seen more recent examples of that in the Middle East and North Africa, and uh, you know, even right here in Europe, where young people have um, in droves taken to the streets to uh, make their frustrations heard about lack of opportunity in their communities. Um, and that is the, the way in which that tremendous empowerment through technology has also generated frustrations. Um, there is a mismatch of expectations that are built for all of us growing up with a clear view beyond of our borders to good governance, transparency, um, rule of law, uh, and job opportunities above all else. Um, and for the 90% of young people that he just mentioned who are in the developing world, um, and for many other in, others in middle-income countries that um, do face a lack of transparency and opportunity. Um, that can then lead to a mismatch of what we grew up expecting and what we actually get in the global job market. Um, so that demographic also can be a source of instability um, when we don't have a way to find jobs to support ourselves, when we don't have a way to make our voices heard peacefully. And right here in Ukraine, I think that's all playing out in a way that's going to be very important to the future of the region and the future of our relationship with this very important country. Um, you know how important a partner Ukraine is on trade issues, uh, on nuclear non-proliferation, where we've just made so many strides in, in, in recent days, um, and on, on really making sure that um, there is a, a powerful um, democratic anchor in this region, um, regardless of what all neighboring countries are, are doing. Um, but that is something that will be hamstrung if we can't enlist all of you and your peers and your communities um, in combating unemployment that causes so many people to leave rather than to stay and build solutions, um, in combating corruption that I know for so many of you is, is a frustration, um, and in increasing access to capital for young entrepreneurs and an investment environment where there can be, be more jobs. I think a well-equipped youth here in Ukraine um, energized by the technology access that is so prominent here, where you've got one of the most vibrant uh, environments for programmers in the world, famously, um, is, is going to be at the heart of securing this important relationship for the United States um, and really making sure that we all move forward towards a brighter future for Ukraine, for the region, and for the world. So I've got heard some great stories already about things that you're doing in your communities, um, some specific stories about the way in which the United States has partnered um, with young Ukrainians to help them fulfill some of their aspirations already. And I definitely want to have a more detailed discussion about how this council can work um, to achieve those things. I also want to make sure the ambassador has time to leave if you have to I'm, head I'm, on to your I'm next good. thing. No, no, I'm staying as long as I can. <laughs> that's, that's excellent. We, we have also today in town, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of those gold letter days, uh, Bo Biden, who is the Attorney General, uh, I think you guys are coming this afternoon to his speech. So I got to go out at some point here to go to meet him at the airport and and uh, bring him in and stuff. But uh, I'm going to stay as long as I can. Well, then why don't I talk just briefly about how this can be an important platform that we want to use in an ongoing way to both spur dialogue and spur solutions. Um, you know, I I think of the example of a young man named Vladimir. Um, who actually, working with the United States government, um, he studied in the United States, he refined some of his ideas, and then he uh, went out and, having seen uh, a lack of uh, people to defend housing rights in, I think he was from Lugansk, um, you know, he went back into his community and built an NGO that is about defending housing rights um, for Ukrainians. And that's exactly the kind of sort of creative thinking and uh, spirit of involvement that we want to foster and we want to see more of, and that we know the United States can stand by Ukrainians as they pursue. Um, so this council is about seeing stories like that replicated, um, where you as young people with creative ideas um, and you know, a remarkable ability to cut through old problems um, can tell us what those ideas are, um, can link into a number of tools and resources um, to build those on the ground. So we're launching this council um, and we are committing to uh, a new fund 
um, four innovative proposals that encourage youth civic engagement. Um, and that will be administered through this council. So as you generate good ideas, um, we are you know, committing to lining up resources. Um, the, the amount of resources will be flexible depending on the, the type of projects that, that these discussions uh, produce. But you know, we, in a very real sense, want to make sure that we come out of this discussion, um, yes, with a clear sense of what your policy priorities are, um, but also with a clear timeline for action, um, which I think is especially important you know, in light of the um, run-up to you know, the critical elections that are coming up. I think there's a real space for uh, focus on those civic engagement projects to, to make a big difference at a, a key turning point in, in Ukraine's history. Um, so there is that fund for, for civic engagement projects, which I'm very excited to be announcing and I'll be talking about in, in the engagement I do during this trip. Um, and there are a range of other tools that being a part of this council um, can really hook you into. Uh, we have a variety of, of mentorship and training tools. Um, we were actually just talking about um, making sure that you're linked up with some of our international virtual mentorship tools. So for those of you who have you know, entrepreneurial ideas, who want to get more contact with the business world, um, you know, we'll be looking at in the coming months, uh, building into this council some of our e-mentorship tools that can link you to uh, American business leaders for advice and guidance. Um, we actually just launched out of our USAID mission, um, our agency for, for development, uh, a financial literacy training project um, specifically directed towards young people because we had heard that 50% of Ukrainians didn't have basic financial literacy and that's going to be a key part of building economic solutions. Um, and one thing that I'm very excited to be announcing during my, my time here is um, at Kyiv Polytechnic um, we will be launching a new um, institute for uh, fostering innovative science and technology projects where people who have um, good ideas for new business proposals in that important sector um, can go for training and guidance and get those projects off the ground. That's something that we have seen at some of America's brightest universities, like MIT, maybe some of you know it. Um, they function in a similar way. So um, that is something that, that I think will be a really significant tool set as, as we launch that in the coming months. Um, but this is just the beginning. I think the fact that we have you um, as you know, formal partners uh, and that we can continue this conversation um, you know, long after I leave um, because I, I want to make sure that, that I'm, I'm continuing to be a part of it. You'll, you'll have all of the contacts here at the embassy um, and the solutions will happen on the ground, but we'll stay linked up on Twitter, on Facebook. Um, I'll leave you all with my contact information. Um, and I think this will be a long-term process of making sure that those things I just mentioned are just the beginning of teaming up to, to build solutions for you know, a strong democratic uh, Kiev going forward. Um, so uh, I look forward to hearing all of your ideas. And uh, with that, I think we can get started. Absolutely.